Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this episode, where I'm following some news stories that I think you might find informative and helpful in the pursuit of education in the electric vehicle marketplace. So, hope everybody's doing okay. Let me get right into it. So as global energy related carbon emissions fell last year because of the impacts of COVID-19 pandemic, one sector, however, saw emissions actually rising in 2020. Guess, the sport utility vehicle sector, of course. Now the world's overall energy related emissions fell by an estimated 7% in 2020, which is the largest drop in history. But emissions from SUVs, which are typically larger and less fuel efficient than other cars, are estimated to have been a slight increase of about half a percent. So emissions from SUVs have nearly tripled over the past decade, owing to their increasing popularity around the world, of course, which has outpaced the growth of other segments of the auto market. No one's surprised. Now today, SUV emissions are comparable to those of the entire maritime industry, including international shipping. So it's quite a lot. SUVs' share of overall sales continued to rise in key markets such as the United States, and I would add Canada, Europe, and China to the mix. The global fleet of SUVs was on course to exceed 280 million vehicles last year, which was up from less than 50 million just 10 years ago. So quite the increase. Now, OEMs and EV startups shown an increased availability of electric SUVs, as we've seen. In 2019, more than 100 electric SUV models were available worldwide, believe it or not, compared with around 180 non-SUV electrical models in 2020. 44% of total electric car models available were SUVs. So, you wonder why most new electric vehicles coming out are SUVs and even CUVs. Well, now you know why. Switching gears to General Motors, General Motors announced last week that it plans to produce the EV600 electric van at its Ingersoll, Ontario plant, excuse me, starting in late 2021, which is great news. The EV600 was revealed earlier as part of a new Bright Drop commercial vehicle unit, and the production announcement channels about $800 million U.S. towards the plant. The Bright Drop EV600 has a 250 mile range, 120 kilowatt DC fast charging, a weight weighting, uh, a weight rating, excuse me, under 10,000 pounds, say that five times fast, and active safety features that closely mimic what's offered on the latest passenger cars and it's aimed as a delivery device for metro area fleets. FedEx has already committed to purchases of this EV and should take first deliveries by the end of this year, which is great news. Now, this former Cami plant, and I used to, I, used, I know it quite well. I used to have friends that worked there, and I live not that far from it. In Ontario, underwent a restructuring two years ago that included the discontinuation of a number of passenger car models, including the Chevy Volt with a V. And since then, the plant has been underutilized. So I'm extremely happy to see more Canadian auto plants convert to EV production, with Ford and Fiat Chrysler to follow with more electrified vehicles from their plant plants coming. In my last episode, I spoke about Group Renault's strategic plan and their EV plans uh, for the future. Now for this show, I want to talk about General Motors. Last week, GM provided a number of live streams and talks during the Consumer Electronics Show, or CES as it's known, and it was a virtual event this year. I would encourage you to check them out as there are lots of topics concerning their electrification plans. However, I watched a few of them and I picked out some stuff, so let me summarize things. Now, GM has made quite the EV noise over the past year or so, as you know by following me and, and the market, claiming to be all in on electrification and announcing many upcoming models with these next few years, within these next few years, to back up that claim. Now, during the CES talks, GM stated that they expect the electric vehicle to become their primary vehicle to build and manufacture this decade. That's quite the statement they made. And besides the current Bolt all-electric offering, they will be bringing to market shortly the new Bolt EUV, uh, which is still based on the current Bolt platform. 
With the Altium BEV 3 platform, however, their new go-to strategy for EVs, they will bring out the Cadillac Lyric and the Hummer EV as well this year. So including these vehicles, GM plans to release about 30 electric vehicles within the next five years or four years now by 2025. Since their Altium platform can underpin many electric vehicles that are different and different deployments, like SUVs and cars, GM expects to lower costs for their EVs to ensure cost parity with internal combustion vehicles this decade. Love to hear that. Now, they want to provide a mass market approach to EVs, and to do this, they need to produce a breadth of offerings. Now, what else do they see and are planning for, you may ask? I'm glad you asked that. Well, they believe that a range of 300 miles, or about 480 or so kilometers, is the sweet spot for mass EV adoption. Now, you couple this with charging infrastructure to support long-range travel, and 10 to 15 minute charge times to 80%, GM thinks this will be the characteristics of all electric vehicles that will open the floodgates for mass uptake. Now, finally, I found this point interesting, uh, a little tidbit of information regarding GM and the EV tipping point. Uh, we all have different terms of what we think tipping point is. Now, this is from the time for the EVs is upon us talk. Here's a snippet from that. Have a listen. Hi there. I'm Malcolm Valpo. Mark, we've, we've covered a lot of ground, and I'm just curious whether you have any questions for me. I do. Um, you know, the tipping point, right? I mean, having, having heard a lot of what our strategy is, a lot of what the detail of the execution of the strategy is, what do you think GM is on that? Yeah. Well, when I think back to that book, I spent a lot of time in that book talking about the different, the different stages people go through when they're trying to mm -hmm. accept a new idea. And it strikes me with EVs, the, the adventurous people have already jumped in. What's left are the people who are a little more cautious and right. who are looking for something very different for whom the, the technological wizardry isn't the selling point. They're nervous. They're, yes. They don't wanna, you know, when you look at the EV landscape, so many of the players are startups. I mean, the average person is terrified of buying a car from a startup. So I think it's enormously significant that um, it matters a lot when a company with a long, deep history and established trust enters the marketplace. There's a there's a big difference between GM jumping in um, and a company that was invented, started five years ago, jumping in. Yeah. So that I think psychologically that changes the the dynamic and gets you a lot closer to the tipping point. And also I think. Uh, having a range of vehicles. So people no longer classify this as a specialty vehicle. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very easy to think of this as a novelty now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's yeah. exactly right. I think we're getting, and the stuff about charging and all those kinds of things that normalize the experience yeah. of owning one of these cars, that's the key. There's been a lot of vehicles that uh, were, were designed and styled that said, hey, look at me, I'm electric, right? You want some of that because you want it to be special and you want it to be modern and technical. But for high volume people that are afraid of it, um, that doesn't really help it a lot either, right? But it's, so if, if you get something that's beautiful, right, that people really want, and it happens to be electric, that's when magic happens, right? Yeah. One, one last question. Why is this the right time to make this kind of investment? What's, what's special about 2021? If you look at you know what we're doing now, and why we're doing it, which I mentioned. Um, we've got a whole company behind that, which is very different, and a whole portfolio behind that. And it's not a one-off. It's, um, it's a 30-off. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, that's a big commitment, and we believe in it, and we can do it. Uh, this company focused um, under Mary's leadership um, can absolutely do that, and we are doing it. And for me, that's um, tremendously exciting. Well, that was really interesting. Now, did you hear some of the key points? The average consumer is scared about buying a vehicle from a startup. Look, remember folks, no matter how good the global plug-in numbers look right now, we simply cannot reach what I think is the mass 
tipping point when we sell over 45 million plugins a year without the big OEMs like GM, Ford, FCA, and all the others. The point about average consumer and startups rings very true. When you look at what Rivian, Lucid, Lordstown, and the other similar startups will produce in the next few years, this is a drop in the bucket compared to what the major auto manufacturers produce. So for General Motors and now other guys like Ford to recognize this and go after the market in a big way, it certainly will add much credibility for millions and millions of consumers to consider an electrified vehicle. Additionally, consumer choice is key. Listen, folks, if you've been watching me, I've been saying this since 2016 and my very first show with Trevor when we started the Model 3 Owners Club YouTube channel. That's why I put in content for our shows that was not Tesla specific. I felt then and I still feel that mass EV adoption cannot happen without choice. Here in this talk, it's described as range of vehicles, so people don't think of an EV as a specialty vehicle. With this, EVs become now more mainstream and are a broader offering across the OEM's product lines. Charging and normalizing this, the experience was another piece of this talk. EVs don't have to stand out in the crowd to show it's an EV. They should be part of the regular fabric of auto offerings, as that is what the mass market of consumers are used to and purchase which supports high volume production for the OEMs. Also, bringing the charging experience and time down to the same experience as putting gas in an ICE V is important that I mentioned before. So if I'm on a road trip and I can get to 80% in about 10 to 15 minutes, well, that takes any objection about charging away. So I have to admit, I'm very impressed with the strategy GM has put forward these past several months. You know, this CES talk is not just from the last week, but they've been saying this stuff now for months and almost a year. And their messaging is consistent. And really, they've converted me into a believer. I'm very excited about the future of GM, and I'm so happy that they finally, finally get it. Switching gears to Volkswagen, now Volkswagen Group, which includes Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche, Skoda, if I got that right, uh, Seat, and more, have seriously accelerated their global plug-in electric car sales last year, basically tripling the 2090, 2019 result, even despite the challenges of 2020 that caused a 15% decline in the overall volume to about 9.3 million for the Volkswagen Group. In 2019, they produced over 10.3 million vehicles. So according to the sales report uh, for 2020, the group has sold roughly 231,000 and change all electric cars. And that's over three times more than in 2019, as I mentioned, which represents about 2.5% of the total. The plug-in hybrids were also growing pretty well for them. And as a result, the Volkswagen Group closed the year with 422,100 new plug-in electric car deliveries, which is up 195% folks year over year. That accounts for over 4.5% of their overall volume. That's a pretty big number. So what were the top five electric models? Well, number one, Volkswagen ID with almost 57,000 units, followed by the Audi e-tron, the Volkswagen e-golf, the Volkswagen e-up, and the Porsche Taycan that, that sold about 20,000 units. So that's pretty good for a really expensive car. So listen, I love to hear this kind of news and you've heard me talk about other OEMs and the success they've had last year. And I hope VW Group continues to accelerate their EV plans for 2021 and beyond. Well, and now for something completely different. My final story for today is about the world's largest electric cruise ship. Meet the Yangtze River Three Gorges One, an electric cruise ship that is poised to become the world's largest of its kind. It will be launched in China this July and enter service in November on popular tourist routes, uh, the Two Dams and One Gorge, the Yicheng Yangtze River Night Cruise, and the Three Gorges Ship Lift. It's a lot to say. Now, not only will the size and passenger capacity be the highest for any electrified cruise ship, but also the battery capacity, which is roughly about 7.5 megawatt hours, which is an equivalent to about 75 to 100 long-range electric cars combined. 
the LFP type batteries, uh, which comprise of over 10,000 cells, will be supplied by CATL. And now, no other further details are provided just yet, but CATL did explain that there will be two charging options, a high voltage and a low voltage, for full flexibility. The ship is to be built by Wusi CCE, if I got that right, electric technology company, supported by the Chinese government. I'm trying on my pronunciation, folks. Now, I absolutely love it, and it's great to see more areas of transportation being electrified. There's all kinds of areas. Continue to watch that space. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Whew, that was a lot to get through. Thanks very much for sticking through it. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, I appreciate everybody watching on YouTube, subscribing. If you haven't, please do pass you know, my show around, tweet it out, send people links, whatever. Tell, tell people about the show. I'd love to, love to get more people watching it. And of course, always value comments and suggestions. Please don't stop sending them in. Thank you very much for doing that. Of course, always a humble thanks to my Patreon supporters you know who you are. I'm organizing a Patreon only um, call coming up at the end of the month. You should have got an email if you're a Patreon supporter. Check it out and please show up for that. It should be a lot of fun. So uh, also, um, again, we're getting through this. Today was a big day. I'm recording this on inaugur the new U.S. Administration Inauguration Day, a big, big day for the EV future, at least for the next few years, as we have an administration now coming in that's really supportive of, of climate change and the EV infrastructure and a lot of things that help support a greener environment. So it should be a really great year to help, great at least next four years, uh, to help boost EV adoption in the U.S. So that's great news. So everybody stay safe, though. We've got a, a, still a hill to climb. Uh, follow public health guidelines and please stay safe. And thanks again for watching the show. I think that's about it that I have. So uh, everybody again, take it easy. And until the next time, I'll see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.